Hello respected viewers, it's George from Ireland. So here I am in the ruins of Chertsey Abbey in Surrey, United Kingdom. So you see the very few stones that stand here. Now the original site was somewhere over there, is now built over by just private housing. So it's built in roughly um, 650 AD, dedicated to, to Saint Peter, as in the first Pope, the, the, the apostle, the disciple, and it was, uh, it was peopled by Benedictine monks, because the Saint Benedict, I think in, in Egypt, in the Dark Ages, had founded that order. So the Benedict, Benedictine monks, they tend to wear black habits, and um, they're a relatively liberal order of monks. I think they're Benedictine nuns too. Uh, for example, uh, whether they um, are clean-shaven is up to the house, and the house might say, you can be here suit or, or clean-shaven. Some houses say, you must grow a beard. Some houses say, you must be clean-shaven. I remember uh, um, in Ampleforth, it's a Benedictine house, they said, you can do either, but must be all one or the other, clean-shaven or bearded, no moustaches or anything like that. So um, here we are, they don't mind socialising, mixing with the laity, um, alcohol's acceptable. They certainly, they, they've got periods of silence in the day, they're not a silent order. Even the so-called Trappists were only silent for several hours a day, um, they weren't totally silent. Although the Benedictines, they dine in silence and they're read to aloud whilst they're eating. Not necessarily religious texts and they develop sign language to say that I want water, pass me the potatoes please, uh, and so on. So uh, the ruins of um, ben this Benedictine Abbey, and of course it was a centre of charity. Uh, the monks were amongst the very few people who could read and write. There was a school attached for some time. Uh, wayfarers would stay here, get their dole, something to eat and drink, often small beer because the river water was too foul to drink. So we, a beer with a very low alcohol content, like under 1%, even children would drink on a daily basis. Um, and so particularly if there were pilgrims walking perhaps discalced to to, to um, Canterbury or wherever, wherever else it might be, um, looking after old people, so caring, providing for the ind indigent and so on. And there's some boys singing in the choir because they're unbroken voices. Uh, so local people would be prou proud of this as a centre of culture and learning. Uh, what else about it? Then the Vikings came and sacked it, sailed up the Thames, and they killed the abbot and quite a few of the other monks at, at one point. Then they burnt it down. They really just wanted to carry off the treasures because they had a kind of a golden pyx or chalice, jewel encrusted, um, uh, uh, you know, bowls and plates and so on for Holy Communion. And the, the monks were pacifists, so they were sure they wouldn't fight back. It was a very soft target. So what else about the famed uh, Chertsey Abbey here? Um, anyway, so it's the Bishop of London, Erkenwald, who founded it in, in, in Anglo-Saxon times. Like I said, it was then called the Isle of Cheriot. Um, so Chertsey was because there was the River Thames that away, and there was the Abbey River that away, which connected to it. Um, but so, so they um, wanted fresh water, clean water with the upstream and dirty water downstream. Here you get your water for drinking and washing and so on, and cooking with, and then effluent for your number ones and number twos are flowing down that way. You don't want to get that the other way around, otherwise your cooking may have a rather unusual taste. Um, anyway, so uh, the abbey was rebuilt in 964 extensively. Some monks came over from the, the um, uh, Benedictine Foundation at Abingdon, which is just south of Oxford. For centuries it was in Berkshire, but it's now considered part of um, uh, Oxfordshire, because the, the River Thames was the boundaries, and Oxford was only just in Oxfordshire. Go over Folly Bridge in Oxford, and you're already in, in, in Berkshire. And indeed, Abingdon was the county town of Berkshire for centuries up until 1974, is now Reading, which is much bigger. Um, uh, anyway, so it was one of the largest monasteries in, in, in England at the time. Reading, Glastonbury, and Bury St Edmunds were even bigger. I know Glastonbury is a very small place, so that famous church on Glastonbury tour in Western England is in Wiltshire, I think, more, more famous for the music festival these days. And Obviously, Reading Abbey is ruined as well. It's right in the middle of the city. And that's what really put Reading's name on the map. And that's why I think Henry II is buried there. Uh, so the Doomsday Book, um, which was sort of completed uh, uh, just after William the Conqueror died, showed that um, this abbey um, uh, owned... Um, um, over 50,000 acres of land. So to provide an income for the monks, some of them even did farming work, carpentry, they were, as well as performing their religious duties, the holy office, seven times a day they would say mass, even getting up in the middle of the night to do so. Uh, they might be carpenters or helping do maintenance or teaching the place or even being a doctor, teaching pupils in the place. Um, they also wanted a, a, a river so that they could um, have fish on Friday. Obviously Catholics were never required to have fish but simply to avoid meat on Friday on the ground that that was the day that Jesus died. And um, uh, 
fish or eggs are thought to be a good source of protein. Of course, that, that rule was abolished with the Second Vatican Council from 1962 to 64, though some Roman Catholics choose to still observe the tradition. Um, so Abbot Hugh of Winchester, he became, came here, was um, uh, made, made Abbot of Chertsey in 1107, and that was seen to be a step up. But the Abbey was in a parlour state, so it really needed his um, firm hand, and there was very extensive uh, rebuilding. Rebuilt a lot in the mid-14th century. Uh, what else can I say about it? So um, then there was the dissolution of the monasteries under Henry VIII. Thomas Cromwell, his Lord Chancellor, saw to that, had the commissioners go around, collect salacious stories from the lo locals, gossip about alcoholism, about bustard as they would have said at the time, about um, simony, sacrilege, and such like sins. Um, um, about people, you know, not, not uh, performing their uh, monkish duties. Um, okay, and but, but sometimes these the stories were not scandalous enough, they're sent back to be rewritten, we want some dirt, because the local people were actually also full of laudation for the Abbey. But in 1137 it was suppressed, because it was a large and actually quite reputable one, it's one of the later ones to be shut down. Um, but it wasn't completely destroyed, they removed the lead from some of the roofs so the monks couldn't come back. Some of the buildings were still intact, so that in, in, in um, uh, 1147 the Archbishop of Canterbury, it was then um, uh, uh, Thomas Cranmer, he came here and stayed here for a while was working on the Book of Common Prayer. There have been several editions of the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, and then indeed the Bishop of St. David's in Wales, he was consecrated by Cranmer here, um, even though he had to go all the way to West Wales to, to um, officiate there, St. David's being the religious capital uh, of Wales. So, um, uh, and after, the, after about 1548, it really seems to fall into rack and ruin, and there's no record of anything happening here for centuries. So the, the land was sold off to, to landlords, which really bound them into the Reformation, because they didn't want Catholicism to come back, because they didn't want to lose their ill-gotten lucre. And that's when Mary Tudor came in, 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 in um, uh, 1558. She didn't insist that they return the land. She thought that might spark off a Protestant rebellion. But um, in, um, uh, in the 1860s, the place was extensively excavated, and they found that the, the um, chapel the main chapel was about um, 80 meters long and then in the 1950s more work was carried out as well as a little bit in the 1930s they figured out where the kitchen was and what some of the tiles were like and so on a lot of the stone was stolen um, when um, when when the place was falling apart and presumably it's the foundations of various buildings around here but most notably Henry VI was buried here after he was murdered in May um, 1171 uh, because they wanted to bury him fairly far away from London it wasn't that far so they could get him you know, transport his body within one day down the Thames onto a horse-drawn cart, somewhere fairly obscure, a small Benedictine monastery. Henry VI was born in, in, in Windsor Castle and it was um, exhumed and reinterred in Windsor Castle, indeed later on, famously as the founder of Eton, so born um, uh, 1421 and died 1171. Uh, just after his son Edward of Westminster um, was killed in the Battle of Tewkesbury. There is, there is a Yorkist claim, probably mythical, that he died of grief when he heard that his son had been slain. Uh, so I don't know where exactly his body was, there's no sort of X marks the spot, because very little remains of the original uh, monastic buildings, you know, the scriptorium, the califactory, the various dormitories and so on. Uh, right, thank you so much for watching my channel, so please make sure you subscribe on Patreon and donate on PayPal to me, and you can see all the things behind the PayPal wall, you know, hundreds of articles, thousands of videos. Bye-bye.